what's going on guys today we're working on minty mel that's my brother-in-law uh, david's truck we're going to do a pcm repair number two i've already done the pcm repair in the red truck and we're going to do a pcm repair in this truck the symptoms is the exact same symptoms as any of the other trucks uh, it doesn't charge after we start it no matter how long you wait uh, the wait to start does not go on as in like the grid heaters don't cycle right at the beginning before you uh, fire up the truck so those are a couple of the symptoms uh watch my previous videos i go over all the symptoms of the failing pcm so i already know this this pcm is on its way out so what, what we're going to do is uh replace the capacitors in the pcm so we'll try and fire it now uh, the battery is a little toast so i don't know if it's going to fire up but we'll fire it up and i'll show you that it's not charging if we can get it started and then we'll replace the capacitors do that again and show you everything's working so wait to start so the wait to start and the water and fuel don't come on, and they should. What happened? The wait to start and fuel light, also like the below fuel light came on. After well, you, like, after like you started it? Yeah. After you started it. So are they on now? Man, it sounds way softer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here, here the wait to start light is staying on and it might be doing a post heat cycle but it's not charging so it might show that it's not charging while it's doing the post heat cycle because it, the grid heaters draw a lot of amperage but in this case the wait to start light hasn't gone off uh, which means the grid heaters are kind of they're malfunctioning there and it's not showing a charging voltage so battery's not uh, getting charged by the alternator we'll pop the pcm out uh, after we warm up the truck here we just did a whole bunch of maintenance this weekend and uh we'll uh, see what that does okay and uh truck's been running maybe five minutes and i don't know if you can see this here the wait to start light is flickering very very rapidly and uh you'll also be able to hear under the under the hood one of the relays if i'm not mistaken it's the asd relay it clicks rapidly at the same uh, like cadence and then as soon as that kind of does its thing there it can it can take anywhere from five to ten minutes to do its thing it'll all of a sudden start charging again so I'll, I'll bring it back to you here when the truck starts charging if it does here in the next couple of minutes but you can see actually now the water to fuel the water and fuel light is just barely fading in truck will start to charge still doing its thing truck is not charging yet I'll show you what I mean here in a sec okay there we go so the uh, wait to start and the water and fuel both came off and now the truck is more than likely doing its uh, regular charging cycle and the truck should be charging now, for some reason, it's not showing a charge. Oh, there we go. So that's, I'm suspecting there that it's doing its post heat cycle. So it's drawing down the grids, but you can see it's 10, 12, just under 14 volts doing its post heat cycle. And once it's done doing its post heat cycle and the truck's warmed up fully, you know, according to the PCM, then, uh, then it'll just charge constantly and the grid heaters won't be cycling. Alright, so the truck is charging, it's uh, pretty much warmed up, and we'll shut it off, and we'll go ahead and take the PCM out. Okay, so I'm going to take the PCM out on the 92s, 93s, the PCMs are just behind the battery here. I'm going to use an 8 mil uh, socket and take the, the 60 pin connector off, and just loosen it, I'll pull that connector back here, and then there's three, three uh, bolts that hold it onto like a bracket under the fender. So we'll take this piece off first. Underneath that stock wiring harness. 
Yay! 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 PCM. I dropped one of those screws down there. Okay, so we have the PCM inside now, and we're gonna work on it inside in the warmth away from the bad weather. We've got the cover taken off, and just taking a look at a few of the components in here. These are the heat sinks for the voltage regulation, because the voltage regulation occurs inside the PCM. And the pieces we're gonna be replacing are these capacitors. So there's one here to the right of these voltage regulators, and then there's two up here. And these capacitors can get bad over time, and they need replaced. So what we're gonna do is, first we're gonna try and take a sharp knife or like a putty knife or something, get around the edges and then take the whole board out, uh, keeping all this like gel stuff intact. And then once that's out, we're gonna cut around the capacitors and peel the gel away, desolder those three components and then solder in the new capacitors that we've got. And, and then fill in uh, the parts that we cut out with a bit of silicone. There we go, one solid piece. Mm. So there's no visible burn marks looking through the gel to the PCB on the back side, so that's good. If you look through the gel to the PCB, it's kind of dirty over here, but uh, we'll peel the gel away over there. Doesn't really look like there's burn marks. Sometimes these capacitors can blow out the top and actually pop right out. Okay, so now we're uh, cutting out the gel around the capacitors and peeling away uh, the gel on the front side and then on the back side. David has taken the silicone out of the top and now he's gonna work on the bottom. So just hold your hold your soldering iron on that pin and then it, sh it should suck it up. So how about, um, so I'll try and pull the capacitor from the back as you heat up those two pins and then we'll see if I can pull it out now. So we desoldered this one. I uh, found out a good trick was uh, David put the soldering iron on the back and then I kind of pulled from the other side as he heated up each leg of the capacitor. And so we've got this out. It's important to note when you take these out, the uh, polarity of these. So this stripe on the one side indicates the polarity. So the stripe in this case is facing up and then these two, the stripes are facing uh, to the inside of the board. So we'll do the same trick for these two and then install the new capacitors. And the capacitance of these capacitors, 220 uh, microfarad, 220 microfarad, 470 microfarad, and they're all rated at 25 volts. That one wiggled out. That one's out. That one's also out. There we go. Polarity is like that. Okay, so trick on desoldering these to get the solders solder out of each uh, pin or each hole there is to use some strand copper and then a little bit of yeah use the heat and then use some uh, uh, flux and then you can just put the copper on there while you're soldering and then the solder just wicks up onto the copper and then now all these holes are free and uh, they go through <laughs> So we'll put all these capacitors in the correct polarity and solder them permanent. Okay, so we've got the first capacitor in here. I'm just gonna hold it from the back while David applies a little bit of solder. So it's good as long as it's on the pad and touching the, the contact of the solder or the capacitor pin, then we're in the right spot. Yeah, that's all she takes. I think it's good, man. I think it's mint. Yeah? I think we should go put it in the truck at 10.30 p.m. in our pajamas. Fixing first gens in our pajamas. Okay, so we're gonna finish this off by putting some silicone onto the bottom first uh, on each spot that we opened up, and then we're gonna move on to the top after we place it into that uh, bottom plastic piece. Nice. Don't. <laughs> it's a mess. 
Jesus. Okay, so the repaired PCM is back into its place here underneath the driver's side fender. So we'll go into the driver's seat. I'll let you start it because I'm all dirty. Okay, we'll go into the driver's seat and cycle the key. What temperature do you think it is out right now? All right, so it's six degrees Celsius. So chances are the grid heaters are going to cycle. So they should cycle as designed. So the wait to start and the water and fuel light should come on now when we cycle the key to the wait to start position. Water and fuel wait to start come on. I can hear the grid heater relays whining. They should click off. <laughs> and then we'll fire it up. And then the grid heaters will start doing their post heat cycle here so we'll watch the voltage bounce up and down a bit while the truck warms up and then once it's done it'll go to a charging voltage. The water and fuel and the wake to start are both off and the truck's still warming up going between a charging voltage and then drawing down when the grid heaters are on. So grid heaters are draw drawing on now and then they're switching off. All right, this uh, wraps up the PCM repair. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.